All right, so I've got the new Intel camera, and it is the tracking camera, the RealSense T265. Um, what I'm going to do is plug it in. I've already got the RealSense software running. By the way, the version that you have to have is 2.2. 2.19.0 at least. Um, that's going to be a problem for me later on because I use the uh, LabVIEW software and the LabVIEW wrappers are using the 2.11 DLL. So I'm sure that there's going to be some updates and I'm not going to use all the features that the camera currently has. But let's get this plugged in and um, Okay, as soon as it's plugged in, you can see what the information from the tracking camera actually shows. Um, so, we've got a binocular stereo view of the left camera and the right camera, as well as a gyro and an accelerometer. And then where the pose is basically where it thinks the camera is in three-dimensional space. I'm going to flip it upside down, right side up, um, and that's interesting. What happens in 3D is it knows where it is in three-dimensional space pretty much all the time. I'm going to scroll this around. I'm going to zoom out. All right, now I'm, I'm just tethered with a uh, uh, three foot USB cable, so there's not a whole lot that I can do like distance wise. But the important information about this is actually, let me pause this and restart it. That's clearing it. I'm going to bring up the information. Um, so, for what I care about, I care about this translation and the rotation. Um, these are quaternions, and I'm not familiar with quaternions. I'm familiar with matrix rotations, so I got to do some research to find out how to do the conversion. I understand that it's a little more complicated. Um, it depends on the order that you do the conversion and stuff like that. So I got I got to figure out how to do that. But the cool thing is, you can tell where the camera is, where it's looking, and um, basically where the, uh, the, the information that it's seeing will be. And that comes in when we add the other RealSense camera, which is, this is the D435. Um, I've had this for a while. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just basically hold these two together, get them both plugged in, hold them together, and move it around, and it actually does some pretty cool stuff. So bear with me a moment while I hook up the cables. Okay, I'm going to close the software. I'm going to add a source. I'm going to add D35. There it is. Now I'm going to add source D, uh, I'm sorry, T for tracking. 265. Alright, so now I'm going to turn on the D. I'm going to turn on the tracking. And let's take a look at that 2D. There it is. And now I'm going to turn on the stereo uh, depth information. So here's our, that's the table in depth information. You see the laptop. What the hell, let's look at the camera. There, that's everybody. Alright, now the thing that amazes me. They're going to go to 3D, and ah, of course it's not going to work. Of course it's not going to work because, because something isn't there. What is not there? Hmm. Texture source is the color. There it is. Okay, I didn't realize I had the texture. It was the fisheye lens, and that's why things were screwed up. I'm going to turn the texture off, or maybe let's just use the depth as the texture. All right. 
What's going on here? The thing that's really remarkable is that now that both cameras are working together, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna hold this looking down onto the um, to the laptop, and I'm not moving the camera. I'm just moving the the view. Is that now the depth information is locked to the tracking camera. So one of the things that could potentially be done is um, capturing the 3D information, knowing where the camera was looking, we might be able to reconstruct a scene uh, almost, to the, the, at least the point clouds, almost in real time if there's enough resources to do it. Um, that's that's pretty pretty amazing to me. Now, one of the things that I need to show here is what happens when I'm um, getting a lot of these notifications, and I don't know if that has to do with that firmware issue or my cable or what. Um, let's turn this off. Let's turn all this stuff off for a second. Now, I'm not going to use the tracking camera. I'm only going to turn on the stereo camera and the... Um, so there's the stereo depth information and the, um, the, the color camera. So let's go back to the 3D. Now when I move this around, because we don't have the tracking camera, the translational information and the rotation information, all that stuff doesn't exist in the data. So the data hasn't, the, the points in the point cloud, they have not been transformed to where the camera is. Um, and that's, that's really a cool feature that for just $200, you can add the tracking data and instantaneously get the point cloud transformed based on where you're looking. And it makes it basically a depth scanner. I mean that is that is remarkable. I mean this is okay, it's two hundred dollars for the tracking camera and it's two hundred dollars for the depth camera. But when you compare that to the stuff that's available industrially, which <laughs> Just a two-dimensional camera industrially starts at five hundred dollars, and depth cameras. Granted, they're high resolution, they're industrial, but they're twenty thousand dollars. This is a phenomenal object, or two objects, as the case may be. And I really uh, am excited to to start using this for depth information with LabVIEW and uh, we'll see how that goes as far as updating the DLLs and that sort of thing. Let's just image me for a second. And let's look at that texture. Ugh! Man. Oh, that's not terrible. You can see a lot. I'm not very far away here, so... Let's take a look at this little snapshot I'm going to save as a, as a PLY file. Let's turn the tracking camera back on. for this to matter, and then pause, and save, and I'll call this test 4.